Hi Kunis, welcome back to Kun's channel. If you ask players around rank 120 to 150 about Omega or Magna 2, they will probably tell you how stressful is the transition from Magna 1 to Magna 2. However, if you ask a rank 200 player about Magna 2, they might just give you a very carefree look or smile and continue to steal MVP in their race. Why is it so stressful to be a new player? Can we play Grim Fantasy like boss and seamlessly go from Magna 1 to Magna 2 or even Magna 3 in future? Today, we'll tackle the source, the core and the root of your stress. I'm going to share you guys my experience, my tricks and most importantly, help new players, especially players between rank 100 to rank 150 to broaden their view so they can foresee their future and enjoy their game to the fullest. We will talk about goal setting, weapon ecosystem, drop rate mechanism and some useful tips in this video. I will get rid of those burdens on your shoulders. Let's go. Even if you are the best driver in the world, if you have no direction, no location, how are you going to reach your destination? Goal setting is very important, not just for grim fantasy but also for your real life. But how? There are 6 elements in Grammar Fantasy. It is advisable to grow each element in an average way, especially when you're working on your M2 grid, instead of focusing on just one element. And it is always easier, clearer, and more sensible to use the next skill wall as the direction of a goal to improve your weapon grid. Why? First, as you step further into the late game, it will become harder for you to fight enemies using an off-element weapon grid due to the mechanism of elemental advantage in Grim Fantasy. Basically, you're no longer able to use one element to conquer all the other elements. That's why you should balance your effort and aim for a wholesome growth instead of sticking to one element. This will help you to improve your overall ability to collect resources over time. The better you are at collecting resources, the easier you can advance to the next level. On the surface, Grammar Fantasy is a gacha game and JRPG, but in reality, Grammar Fantasy is a resource management game and your true strength is your ability to collect resources in the shortest possible time and your damage output is actually your tool. This is the reason why you want to be all-rounded so that you can perform well in every single event and collect as many resources as possible for your future use. Second, the reason we choose to use the next guild war as a goal to improve our weapon grid is because guild war offers a lot of resources that are difficult to come by. For example, value badge, sunlight stone, gold brick, or even Everlight. Of course, you can set the goal based on your favorite characters or your favorite elements, but I personally think that using Guild War as a goal is more efficient. That's why we can see a lot of players are using Guild War as their compass to improve their weapon grids. For example, next Guild War is a fire advantage Guild War. Then, you should probably focus on Shiva, Colossus, Twin Elements, Artina, or any ray that is able to provide fire weapon for you to craft a better fire weapon grid. After that, if you think you still have extra time and energy to improve weapon grid of an other element, feel free to go for it. Some new players might think that Magna 2 is the only way out. They thought they could only become stronger by farming Shiva over and over again. However, this is not 100% true. There are so many types of fire weapons and fire weapon grids in Grim Fantasy. It doesn't really matter whether you're Magna or Primal user. You can mix and match to create a Highlander grid, you can build an Akase grid, you can form a traditional staff grid. The freedom is always in your hands. So please don't take Magna 2 weapon grid as a burden and don't narrow down your choice because it is not the only way out. 
I will further elaborate this point when we talk about the weapon ecosystem in the next section of this video. Alright, let's talk about the weapon ecosystem in Granblue Fantasy. The reason why we want to talk about the weapon ecosystem in Granblue Fantasy is to let you know whether grinding is necessary and help you to foresee the next big trend in Granblue Fantasy. Basically, the weapon grids in Granblue Fantasy can be divided into Primal Weapon Grid and Magna Weapon Grid. These two grids are supplemented by a variety of weapons, such as EX Weapon, Ultima Weapons, Dark Opus Weapons, and so on. If we look at the timeline of some important changes in Grand Fantasy, we can discover that the interval between major revamps like 4 star or 5 star uncaps are usually between 1 to 2 and a half years for both Primal and Magna Weapon grids. If we analyze this information, they actually give you a few hints. First, there is always ample time for you to grind your Magna Grids, so there is no need to rush. Most of the time, your stress comes from competitions between friends and crewmates instead of the power crate itself. So please don't get lost, try to follow your own pace. Second, we can always use Primal Grid to complement our Magna Grids. Which means, if you are able to get 3 Primal Summons, you probably only have to work on 3 Magna Grids instead of 6. A lot of new players, especially free players, didn't know that by the time you have sparked like 6 to 7 times, you are already capable of forming 1, 2 or even 3 Primal Grids with Grand Weapons. That thought, Primal Grid is for the rich or cash players. This is absolutely not true. I'm not saying that with Primal Grids, you can kiss goodbye to Magna and Magna 2. No, no way. But it can certainly save you a lot of time and effort. Try to use your Sunlight Stones, try to use your Chocolate Bars. This is also a good reason why you shouldn't overgrind Magna 2. The latest uncap of Primal weapons like Ekasek, Oberon and Konata is also a very good example that Magna 2 Weapon Grid is not the only way out. You can always form a grid with minimal Magna 2 weapon and still dish out decent damage. Number 3 If we refer to the timeline again, the next uncap of Magna or Magna 2 is going to be here by the end of this year or latest by the first half of 2021. Of course, it doesn't mean that Grim Fantasy is going to go easy on your daily grind. But this time around, you and your senpai will be standing on the same starting point. This is a very good chance for you to catch up. So don't overburden yourself with Magna 2. Do whatever you can do now and prepare for the next big wave. Knowledge is power. Without understanding the drop rate mechanism, your unlimited leeching work is not going to work. High level rays like Impossible Magna or Magna 2 are different from the extreme version. Most high level rays are using blue chest mechanism. Under this mechanism, most powerful weapon can only be found in the host chest, MVP chest and blue chest. These three chests are not affected by bounty level as far as I know. If you don't host, you don't get MVP, you don't contribute, there is a guarantee zero chance for you to get Magna 2 weapons. This idea unfortunately applies to almost all impossible rays. Sorry to burst the bubble, but this is the truth. I believe most of the senpais ask you to leech, but my lovely kunis, it is not going to work because the senpais probably didn't know much about the drop table. To optimize the results, there are four things you should do. First, learn to read the drop table. Go wiki kiwi wiki without knowing the source of your dream weapon. There is no way for you to grind in an efficient way. Second, try to host as many raids as possible because host chest is the most valuable chest in Grim Fantasy. Thirdly, try to go for MVP, especially when you're hosting a raid because you have the ball at your feet. 
Most of the time, MVP chest is only given to top 3 players, but in certain raids, this chest is given to top 6 players. Finally, try to contribute as much as you can. You can only get a blue chest when your contribution or your honor point is high enough. So please do not leech unless you're looking for Archangel weapons and fragments. In addition, I personally encourage players to avoid joining raids during the strike time, or you can simply adjust your strike time to a different time slot, because most of the raids nowadays are dying too fast. If you really want to get that blue chest, it is better for you to do some adjustment so they can deal as much damage as possible. Use Monitor, Huangdong and Shiva if you must, they are good friends. You can start grinding once you know the percentage of contribution to get a blue chest. One of the most important tools I'm using when I want to focus on certain raids is Grim Fancy Raiders. You can use this filter to copy raid IDs and paste them into a game. It is very user friendly, just like Twig Deck, but the layout is more clear cut and everything is in English, so it is currently my number one raid filter for Grim Fancy. Wiki is another place you want to do your research. It doesn't matter whether you want to use Japanese Wiki or English Wiki, they both offer valuable information to old and new players. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to Kun's channel because I make sure all my contents are very different from other YouTubers. I don't only show you the damage, I show you the way. I'm sure there are a lot of players using different tools to facilitate their grinding. What is your favorite tool when you're grinding? Whether it is Netflix, Spotify, or just newspapers, please share with us the tips in the comment section below. Your knowledge will be able to help players from all over the world, and we will all be very grateful of your sharing. Know your game, know yourself, and play like a pro. This is Ken. I will see you again in the next video. Ciao! これで君力を合わせれば必ず勝てよ。テンペストブレード。テンペストブレード。